just before I introduce the guest, bring in a cassette and fix this up. Uh, I never had the pleasure of the honor of meeting Charlie Fuse. You know, he, uh, he, he, he's one of the main reasons in my life that I became what I was. You know what I mean? As a young lad, 19, frankly, on the boat, doing this, doing that, and doing the other. And uh, you were hearing these stories floating about about the uh, company and uh, the people in it and what they were doing, taking on the British Army and uh, the lawless gangs and the programs and all. And uh, after the curfew, it, it started to hit home that something was very, very wrong, you know. And then after Charlie's death, we suddenly realised things. I realised that Charlie and, and uh, the volunteers at the department were actually out fighting the British Army. With, with weapons that were more at home in a, in a museum. The weapons was out of 1916 And they were going again the, 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 the best armed army probably in Western Europe or the war at the time. And they were holding their own. Uh, I, that's all I'd say, you know, and uh, I'll hand you over to the speaker. He did you, Charlie, very well. Uh, my name is Lloyd. Many accounts have been given down the years as what happened on the night our comrade died. I have spoken personally to the volunteers involved and this is our account. I'll start off with telling you about Charlie first of all. Charlie was born in Red and Service Street. He was a member of nine children, three, three boys and six girls. He was educated in St. Joseph's School, Primary School, State Street. That's where he he became a pioneer because anybody who went to history school always took the oath that they would have straight from drink. He also became a member as he grew of St. Peter's Confraternity. Never missed it. And as he grew in years, he became a roofer, as you all know. He took his love for Salic. Everybody who knew Salic, and who knew Charlie, would know his love for Salic was legendary. Right, he joined the local company and quickly rose through the ranks to inherit the OC position. That was a rank he, he held up until the day he died. On the day that Charlie died, there was a young lad called Billy Halligan. He was buried. There was a lot of tension in the air. He was killed by a British army in Ragnar Street. And all volunteers that day and that weekend had an on standby. There was a lot of anger and everybody was on order. Right, word reached Charlie that a volunteer had been kidnapped, pistol whipped and body beaten and then just dumped on Neeson Street by the officials in their drinking club known then as the Crack Club. Charlie then all ordered all volunteers to acquire weapons and report to call houses. He left the district for King Street to report to what happened. And when he returned, he returned with paddle cans and other volunteers. He then ordered all volunteers to surround the burning embers in Service Street. He ordered everybody out, including drinking in the, the, the club that day was the Brigade Staff OC of the official IRA, along with a newly elected MP for Stormont. They set the place alight. They then ordered all known IRA, uh, official IRA personnel against the wall. Some of the volunteers were that angry they wanted to shoot them there and then. Charlie had stated, no Irish man will be shot by Irish men tonight. They released them. He then ordered volunteers to assemble in Service Street, some to head to Barnard Street Cap, some to McDonald Street to march to the Crack Cup. They were going to burn the Crack Cup. So as both units lined up the ground along the street, the people of McDonald Street clapped them, the people of Barnard Street clapped them. But as they got to Barnard Street Gap and little McDonald Street, they were ambushed by members of the official IRA who had been waiting on them. 
One volunteer was shot in the back in front of street cap from a window in Saber Street. A large and heavy gun battle erupted. Charlie then withdrew all his men, fearing that the British Army would immediately surround the area. He reported to all his men to go to call houses and dump their weapons and wait for their instructions. He then proceeded to go to a house in Saber Street, known to all the Squire Maguires. Him, a female volunteer, and four other men were in the house. Over a period of time, they with us, hoped that things had calmed down. But on own to Charlie, the officials had been waiting. They had seen him at the, at the Squire's house. And when he emerged, Two gunmen fired at Charlie. Charlie then tried to use the lamppost as cover. Another volunteer had dived onto her car. They continued firing. And one must remember, there was only one bullet that killed Charlie that night. He was shot in the back. Unlike what other people have stated, he didn't die in the gutter. There was people around him, comforting him. Young Paul Leonard, he was there. Balance was there and a number of other people. Johnny Collins was there as well. They said the act of contrition. When they brought Charlie's body home, the leadership had been told by the British government and the British Army that they would not tolerate a military presence of any kind. So with the family they agreed that they would have a colour body in the house and then Charlie would be buried with a dignified funeral. But as in the curfew, they knew he was a fearless warrior. They surrounded the district. Again, 3,000 soldiers seen off the area. From Service Street, and you can see the footage, right up to Bahal Terrace. That's how deep the British present was. But in the respect for his fearless soldier, Members of the Parachute Regiment and other British regiments saluted Charlie's cortege as a past. He was laid to rest and the mourners stretched for near enough a mile. Charlie was a legendary figure. He was the first volunteer to die in big company. And we look at the monument. There's a lot of other names came behind him. When you saw the look on the, the wall, a lot of them making their 40th anniversary soon. So before we go, what we'll say is that we won't, we're not free yet everybody, but we won't forget our dying comrades. Got to be in my audience. I'd just like to thank everybody here here today to pay their respects to Charlie and uh, if any man deserved it, he did. Uh, I'd just like to finish off for one thing. It's just, it's just a wee thing here. The annual D Company Easter Parade will take place from Warwick Street 12 noon on Easter Sunday 24th of April uh, with a reflex ceremony at the, at the, the bar. Uh, Again, I'd just like to thank us all for coming here. Okay, thank you, man.